welcome to Bittersweet Theory. First, before we dive into this theory, I wanted to address the elephant in the room. Yes, I forgot about where Sephiroth's body ended up in the original game. My bad on that one, and I assure you this time I did my homework, and this time I didn't make up a theory based off coffee-induced memory. Today we are going over the full Final Fantasy VII Remake 4. The theory is that Zack is alive in the real world and what we are seeing happening with Cloud along with the others is a manipulation caused by Genova. In order to understand this theory, we have to start from the beginning. 2,000 years ago, the ancients referred to themselves as Tetris responded to the cry from the planet. What had happened was that a large crater had fallen from the sky. The planet told them that it was going to use spirit energy to heal itself and warn them to stay away. The ancients referred to this event as the crisis from the sky. Inside the crater was an alien species that had the power to appear as friends and family in order to infect them with the virus. The virus would make the sentry go insane and turn into monsters. Then once the alien had infected one clan, it would move on to the next, leaving a trail of monsters behind. We know that the alien is later called Genova, but we'll get to that in a moment. I believe that Genova was an evasive species that infected other creatures and slowly turned the host into mindless monsters. So with that, Genova's goal is to spread the cells and to create more creatures. Later on, we'll discuss more about how she's able to take over the live stream, but for now, we'll continue on with the stories of the Cetris. In order to help get rid of Genova, the planet itself formed a force called Weapon to combat and get rid of Genova. However, there was no sign of it ever being used. Not having a way to get rid of Genova effectively, at the time, the remaining Sentra sealed Genova away. Here is my theory on this. It is possible that Genova could have influenced the other remaining Sentra people. That might be the reason why the weapons were never used. So, they sealed her away as a means to stop her from infecting more people, and to let the planet find a way to get rid of the threat. From then on, the weapons lie dormant as the planet tries to heal itself and find a way to get rid of the threat that is Genova. This plan might have worked over time, but the Shinra Power Company is hindering the planet from healing itself. 2,000 years later, Shinra Power Company, who was originally established as a weapons manufacturer, discovered a new form of energy called Mako Energy. Mako Energy is the liquid form of the planet's live stream. And when people die, their spiritual energy goes back to the live stream. That would mean that Shinra is using dead people's spirits to create power. The next significant event in the timeline is where Shinra Company finds Genova at Mount Nebel. After they find Genova, research starts taking place at Shinra Manor. This is where Professor Gas mistakes Genova as an ancient. Then he starts the Genova Project or Project D. The main goal was to produce a modern day Cetra. With this project, he was assisted by Dr. Hojo and Lucrezia, with Dr. Hollander taking an interest in their research later on. These events took place about 25 to 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII. The majority of the research would take place at Chinder Manor, above the town of Nibelheim. Vincent Valentine was assigned as a bodyguard to the manor. During that time, Vincent fell in love with Lucrezia, but got rejected due to her blaming herself for what happened to Vincent's father. Instead of marrying Vincent, she married Hojo. Though I have no idea why she wouldn't choose Vincent, I mean, I have my suspicions on that, that she didn't really choose Hojo. Anyway, during this time, Shinra scientists were now experimenting on unborn children. They would go on to create Andrew and Genesis, who showed promising results. Also during this time, Hojo and Lucrezia offered their unborn child to Professor Gas to use an experiment, despite Vincent pleading Lucrezia not to. That experiment would later become Sephiroth, but he was deemed a failure because he couldn't communicate with the planet. Hojo never told Sephiroth the truth about what had happened. He only told him that his mother's name was Genova. Sephiroth went on to become a first-class soldier, never knowing the real events of his past. Okay, now I know I said that Hojo was Sephiroth's father, but if you look at Sephiroth and Vincent, you can see a lot of similarities. I'm just saying if I had to choose between Hodo, Hojo and Vincent, I would choose the sexy slice of shadows that is Vincent all day long. Let me know what you think down in the comments if this is worth, worth going into. But for now, back to the story. Later on, 22 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII took place, Professor Gas and Alfana, Aerith's birth mother, and the last living full-blooded Sentra, had Aerith. But a few weeks later, 
Hojo came for the small family and gas died, trying to escape. Aerith and her mother were taken to Midgar where they were subjected to experience. Somehow Aerith and her mother were able to escape. Unfortunately, Elf went up his beak, and due to the experiment, she pushed herself too far and died. Just before she would join the live stream, Elfana gave Aerith the white orb of materia that she was born with. Elfana insisted that Elmira look after Aerith. As Elfana started looking after Aerith, she was grieving over her husband who died on the front lines. Then Tenzin, a Shinra Turk, turns up at their doorstep asking about Aerith. This is where we learn that Shinra's goal is, was to create a modern day Sephira in hopes of finding the promised land. Why? Well, they are always in a constant need of Mako, or just simple corporate greed. So the plan now is to one day use Aerith to find the promised land. Now we can get to the main events surrounding Final Fantasy VII Remake. I do skip over a lot of details, but I could talk about the full timeline for hours and for the sake of the video, I want to get to the main theory. However, if there's an event in the game or another game you feel I should cover, please let me know down in the comments. For now, we'll move on with the story. Word spreads of Sephiroth being a great war hero, and it inspires a lot of young men to join Soldier, one of them being Cloud Strife. Now, here is where the events of Crisis Core take place. It is at this point in time we are introduced to Zack Fair, who has worked his way up to becoming a first class soldier. During this time, Zack meets Aerith and falls in love with her. At the same time, he is tracking down what is happening with Angeal and Genesis with Sephiroth. During the events of the game, Sephiroth and Zack are dispatched to, with two guards to the Reactor 1 at Mount Nebel. One of the guards that are with them is Cloud. Zack and Cloud have become friends by this point in the story. When they get to the town, Cloud doesn't want to look like a failure, so he chooses to hide his face from the town's people. Tifa ends up being their guide up the mountain. They make their way to the reactor only to find that it is a containment place for monsters created by Genova cells. Sephiroth starts to question everything he has been told by Professor Hojo. Inside the reactor, Zack and Sephiroth get a visit from Genesis, who explains that he is suffering from his own form of degradation. This means that his cells are degrading and he needs Sephiroth's cells to survive. Sephiroth refuses the idea of sharing his cells with Genesis and then heads off to the Shinra Manor to learn more about who he is. Well, he learns only what Hojo wanted him to learn. There are no documents explaining about his real mother, Lucrezia, and what happened to her. After learning the truth, he loses his mind with the idea that he is the one who is destined to take over the planet. After Sephiroth burns Nibelheim to the ground, Zack follows him back to the reactor where Sephiroth has killed Tifa's father and hurt Tifa. He did all of this in the pursuit of becoming one with Genova. Zack and Sephiroth face off. Zack is defeated and relies on Cloud to finish the job. Cloud takes the Buster Sword and stabs Sephiroth. This is not enough to kill him as Sephiroth has now made contact with Genova's original cells and is healing his body. Zack asks him one more time to finish off Sephiroth. This leads to Cloud and Sephiroth facing off. Sephiroth makes quick work of Cloud and saps him through the chest. Cloud then shows us that he cannot feel pain and shimmies down the, sh the sword to get better footing and then tosses Sephiroth into an AC unit. Sephiroth dies and falls into Mako. The cells of his body are broken down and reassembled into a crystal somewhere in a northern cave. Over the next five years, Shinova can now use the live stream to spread her cells and manipulate others. More on that subject later. Dr. Hojo takes the remains of Genova's body back to Midgar. As for Zack and Cloud, they are taken by Hojo to the Shinra Manor where they are given enhanced Sephiroth cells. After five years of being in Mako, their bodies have not degraded. Zack is able to use his willpower to break himself and Cloud free. The two of them are now fugitives from Shinra. Cloud is suffering from Mako poisoning and is unable to wake up. Zack carries him back to Midgar. The whole time after they escape, Zack has been avoiding the Shinra army up until the point where he has no choice but to face the army himself. Now this is where things start to get really complicated. Don't worry, I will go over everything the best that I can and provide a lot of visuals. The main theory here is that nothing in Final Fantasy VII has changed. That Final Fantasy Rebirth is providing clarification on what's going on. So for this theory, Zack never died. Allow me to explain. 
Here you can see the dark wisps floating around the soldiers and Zack, but no one can see them. This makes sense that they would show up now because Hojo has the remains of Genova and Midgar. The wisps are, are just a small part of her power. As they are going after Cloud, they protect Zack in the process, while at the same time creating the black tornadoes that we see in the first part of the remake. It's an important thing to note here that all of Midgar is surrounded by these black wisps. It is at this moment in time where Genova starts to manipulate Cloud's mind. What I mean by that is, is that the scene of Zack's death never happened. We know that Cloud is in a coma due to Mako poison. This would be the perfect time for Genova to take over his mind. So while Zack is carrying him to Midgar in Cloud's mind, Genova is making Cloud think that Zack is dead and that he is his living legacy. Then, in the manipulation, Genova has Cloud thinking that he is Zack. The reason why is because she is using Sephiroth's memories about Zack to control Cloud's mind. So the events in the first half of the game take place inside the manipulation while Zack is carrying Cloud to Midgard. When Cloud and Zack get to Midgard, the news broadcast is providing the events of what happened. They see the destruction from the reactor blowing up and the plate falling, followed by the black tornadoes that Genova created. Cloud can still hear what is going on his unconscious state. Genova knows that he can hear and uses the information to manipulate Cloud's mind into thinking that he was there for all of those events that have happened in the first part of the remake. Because the Cloud's mind is being manipulated, the time in which the events happen can be out of order or have a delay to them. Thanks to the reporter, Zack is able to see the wreckage of the expressway. When we hear the officer talking about the ex-soldier with a buster sword, he is talking about Zack. Cloud can hear this too and Genova uses it to add to the persona in his coma story. It is here in the broadcast that you can see Barrett, Tifa, and Thirteen and Aerith are all unconscious. Zack sees a girl and hands Cloud over to her. Then he takes off to save Aerith. After he save, saves Aerith, it is important to note that the material that falls from her hair is white. This is the same material that Aerith's mother gave to her before she died. After this scene, we see just how much Genova has manipulated Cloud's mind. She is taking what Sephiroth remembers about Zack on their missions and making Cloud think that he is Zack. In this cutscene, Cloud is not suffering from his usual migraines, so he really believes that these false memories are true. After Cloud is done explaining what happened, his migraines start right away. The migraines only happen when Genova's manipulation over him starts to conflict with what really happened. This is Cloud's mind fighting back against Genova. Each time Cloud starts to suffer from a migraine, Genova uses images of Sephiroth to keep her hold over him. The next morning, when Cloud starts to talk with the innkeeper, we hear the same broadcast over the radio of what was happening when Zack and Cloud first got to Midgar. Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Good morning, Multiple sir. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Broden, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. This proves that Cloud can hear what is going on in the real world. The next significant event is when Cloud gets attacked by the serpent. Just before he is attacked, he sees an illusion of Sephiroth. When Cloud is pulled under the water by the serpent, Genova appears to Sephiroth again and protects Cloud by killing the snake. The next important event is after the group boards the cruise ship, we we see this girl again. The same girl that Zack asked to look after Cloud. She is running after the ship, telling it to stop. She is now in the live stream due to Genova. We know that Genova has taken over her because her demeanor will change later on when she shows up for the Avalanche meeting. That Zack and Biggs will attend later on. We'll pick back up on this subject later in the game. While on the cruise ship, Genova appears to step off again. This time, Genova is talking about herself in the third person to keep up the appearance of Sephiroth. In this scene, Sephiroth says they say she is a monster, that she can peer inside of you, into the very depths of your soul, that she can become those you hate, those you fear, and those you love, and they call her Genova. Now, she is saying all of this through Sephiroth to keep breaking Cloud's mind. This way, she can use Cloud as a vessel to take over the real world. Then, after they defeat the monster, Sephiroth tells Cloud, don't, Cloud, don't let her fool you, while she is fooling him into thinking what is happening around him is 
reality. The next important event is when the group gets to Casa de Sol. During the scene that Aerith is taking a shower, she is talking to Red 13 at first, but the person saying her name is Zack. This is him trying to wake her up. When Red 13 wakes up to make sure that Aerith is okay, she walks out holding the white materia. She asks what color the materia is. Red tells her that it has none. She tells him that it used to be white. She said that it was white back in Midgar, and Aerith realizes that the whispers have taken all of her memories. What's happening here is that Aerith is starting to realize that something is not right, and the wisps have something to do with it. In fact, the wisps are being controlled by Genova, and Genova has pulled a lot of people in Midgar into the manipulation without them knowing. Later on, after Aerith and Cloud take down the killer robot, the next important scene is with Zack. We see him in an abandoned house. He has sent a letter to Elmira, Aerith's mother. Zack lets her in and tells, the, er, tells her that Aerith is upstairs. Elmira and Zack take Aerith and Cloud to their house. Along the way, Zack asks what happened to Midgar. Elmira explains that everyone thinks that the world is coming to an end. Zack looks up at the sky and sees a golden rift in the sky. Then we see this story cut back to Aerith and we see that she has a little bit of dirt on her cheek that Elmira was talking about. What is really going on here is that Shinra and Genova are destroying the planet and it is starting to fall apart. It is at this point that we learn that Genova is not only using the Wisp to manipulate Cloud but Aerith as well. Genova is the one connecting everyone together using the Wisps and the livestream to manipulate Cloud and Aerith into thinking that what is happening around them is real. We can say the same for the others too because they were unconscious when we saw them in the news broadcast. To better explain this, let's go back to when Zack was fighting off the Shinra army and we can see all the wisps covering Midgar. So it is safe to say that everyone in Midgar could be used in Genova's manipulation. She is keeping those close to Cloud in a coma-like state so that their minds are easier to control. This part of what's going on relates to how everyone is connected to the live stream, but we'll come back to this at, at a later time. For now, we'll continue on with the story. After they stop the robot, the group comes to a large pit where Shinra was harvesting Mako. Spending too much time around the Mako starts to affect Cloud because he is still suffering from Mako poisoning in the real world. We see this when Cloud tries to walk off the edge of the railway platform. Cloud gets another migraine and almost passes out. This is just an example of how Cloud's mind and body are in two different states. Moving on, when the group gets to Barrett's hometown, Cloud has another migraine as Sephiroth appears again inside the hospital where Tifa was taken after Sephiroth attacked her at the reactor five years prior. This time, Sephiroth says, do not be deceived, you know the truth, trust in me. This is Genova pulling Cloud's mind deeper into the manipulation. It is here at the hospital that we learn about sol soldier degradation. What it is that anyone who becomes a soldier over time their cells will degrade. The same thing that was happening to Genesis when he needed Sephiroth's cells. Now we don't see the guys in the black robes when we see the cutscenes of Zack. That is not a lot to go on. but. I think the concept of the soldier degradation is another way for Genova or Sephiroth to convince Cloud that there is something wrong with him and that he cannot change his fate. However, Cloud and Zack's cells will not degrade like the other soldiers because they have Sephiroth's cells. So because they have Sephiroth's cells, they cannot degrade like the other soldiers. The next important part of the game is when the group gets to the Golden Saucer. Again, Sephiroth appears and tells Cloud to have his fun while he still has time. Aerith suggests that he goes and lies down. That leads Cloud and Barrett trying to find rooms for them. Thanks to Cat Sid, they are able to stay in suites at the haunted hotel for the night. When Cloud rests for a while, we see the real world through his eyes. He is still suffering from Mako poisoning, so he's unable to move as he watches Zack. This is more evidence that Cloud and the others are not in the real world, and when you go to sleep, you become aware of what is happening in the real world. I also want to point out that the only one we see sleeping throughout the game is Cloud. During this dreamlike cutscene with Zack, we learn about Biggs and how he is still stopping by the house dropping off food for Elmira and Marlene. 
Marlene is clearly missing Biggs, Tifa, and Barrett. To cheer her up, Zach offers to go find Biggs. After that, we have Cloud waking up in the haunted hotel again. Him and Tifa go on a date, then through a series of events, Barrett is blamed for murder, but the real murderer is his best friend, Dine. Him and Barrett face off for a while until Dine ends up dying at the hands of Shinra. After that, we find out what the president's been up to, then back to the more important cutscene with Zack. Zack is now using a folded up water poster to find Biggs, while everyone around him is getting ready for the world to end. The golden rift in the sky has gotten bigger and people are worried, as they should be. A random explosion goes off that leads Zack to Briggs. Then we are taken back to the group who are making their way through the desert. The team starts heading south until they reach Zack's hometown. Cloud and Aerith visit Zack's family, only Cloud doesn't remember him. Of course not. Genova's manipulation won't let him remember for now. Genova needs someone who doesn't have a strong will over their mind to be a proper vessel. Cloud's real body is suffering from Mako poisoning, so every passing moment his condition gets worse and Genova gets more powerful. I think at this point Cloud might be suffering from brain damage from all the migraines he's been getting. After Cloud and Aerith visit with Zack's parents, Cloud starts to talk about Zack to Aerith and tries to explain that he is dead. This triggers another migraine. The reason why this migraine triggered without Sephiroth is because the events of what happened are conflicting with the Genova's manipulation over Cloud's mind. After this migraine, Cloud suggests that he goes and lies down for a minute. The migraines are starting to happen more frequently now. Things start to really get rough when they head to the old reactor that exploded. On the outside of the reactor, the black whips appear. Now, these whips are more advanced due to the little orbs of energy that they have for faces. Then, right on cue, Sephiroth appears to Cloud again. He tells them to come that it is time leading him into the old reactor. Now that the Wisps are changing forms, this shows that Genova's power is getting a lot stronger. Inside the reactor, the team of heroes stumble across Scarlet, who is trying to get the material from the weapon. Also inside the reactor is a large group of Wisps. Cloud can feel the Mako starting to affect him. After they defeat the monsters that Scarlet had brought with her, one of them falls into the pool of Mako, making it splash up. Cloud inhales too much and stumbles backwards. After this, happens, the Wisp get to work appearing as Sephiroth. This time, Genova is no longer manipulating Cloud's mind, but starts to control it. After hearing loud noises from the reactor, the girls show up to help fight Scarlet. During the fight, Tifa takes on Scarlet by herself, and Cloud tries to snap out of it to help Tifa. As he is making his way towards her, Sephiroth appears again, telling Cloud, and I quote, Let the righteous anger guide you. After this, the Wisps surround him again. This is where Cloud and Sephiroth start be to become one. It is at this moment that Cloud's fighting stance starts to change to Sephiroth's. Just like when Cloud thought that he was Zack, he started to fight like him. Just like Zack, Cloud is now taking on Sephiroth's personality. That means in this moment, Genova has complete control over him. Tifa was able to swing over to the platform that Cloud was standing on. Now we can see that Cloud is more like Sephiroth and has no remorse for any of the soldiers. He kills them, getting blood all over his face. Tifa yells at him to stop, only this time her words are not enough to snap him out of it and back to reality. He falls down for a moment due to the wisps and Tifa is able to get to him. When she does, we can see that Sephiroth has so much control over Cloud that he starts repeating what he says. After that, the wisps disappear. They are gone now that Genova has full control over Cloud's mind and can use him like a puppet. Now that she has control of them, the next thing that Genova does is have Cloud try to get rid of Tifa. Tifa shows, Tifa shows him the scar again, only this time it doesn't work. Cloud starts to repeat what Sephiroth says to Tifa. It is at this point that Cloud is convinced that Tifa is Genova and he goes to attack her. Tifa dodges the attack but it sends her falling into the pool of Mako energy. Cloud gets another migraine and then Tifa gets eaten by the weapon. Seeing this snaps Cloud back to reality for now. With yet another migraine, he remembers what he had just done. Instead of jumping in after her, Cloud regrets his actions and calls out her name. 
While Tifa is on her journey with the whip and she is able to see Sephiroth like Cloud can. He tries to kill her because she is the one that is keeping Cloud from being fully controlled. After that, she gets images of people she knows telling her to wake up and to be strong. When she sees images of Cloud with Sephiroth, it confirms that he has full control over Cloud's mind. He even says, your words can't reach him now. In other words, our spiky haired hero has gone too far now. After that, the big fish comes back to the surface to give Tifa back. Before they can get her out of the large materia, Barrett smacks the crap out of Cloud. Ha! That's what he gets for being a puppet. Cloud hobbles his way over to the big fish. The big fish throws up Tifa. Barrett catches her from falling. Tifa wishes the fish good luck. Then they carry her back to town. Cloud watches over Tifa until she wakes up. After she wakes up, Cloud and Tifa start talking about their past, and Cloud confesses that he is having a midlife crisis, not knowing who, is he, who he is at times. He says, and I quote, It's like there's different people inside of him. He's not wrong. We know that Cloud and Zack are fused with Sephiroth cells, and Sephiroth was made from Genova cells. So Cloud has a nice blend of both. Cloud has the perfect amount of mind-breaking cells inside of him. Cloud then starts to worry about degrading and what is happening to him. Tifa promises to save him this time, and the sweet moment is interrupted. After everyone regroups, they head off to find Sid, who gives them a ride when they need it thanks to Aerith. They head off to Cosmo Canyon. The next important scene is with Dr. Hojo. This scene is important because he claims to have perfected the cell conservation process that he had started with Zack and Cloud all those years ago. He says, what once would have taken years, but now only takes a mere 13 hours. Hojo's plan is to create a stronger clones so that Sephiroth, aka Genova, can come back to life. After that, we get to Red 13's hometown. The group is taken to a device that, a device that allows you to hear what the plan is saying. Tifa starts talking to Bugenhagen about it being the voice of a weapon, not the planet. She starts to tell the old man about what happened. He denies what she is saying, and he then leads them to the planetarium similar to what Shinra has at their corporate office. Here we go over the history of the planet and how when people die, their souls return to the live stream. Everyone is connected to the live stream because of their spiritual energy. Bugenhagen says that it is the basic understanding of planetology. Add an invasive species that can use cells and the live stream and you have a serious problem. This is how Genova is able to control so much. She is using the planet's life force to create an alternate world. It's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, you have Genova manipulating people and using the live stream to get around. Then you have Shinra who is draining all of the Mako, which is the liquid form of the live stream. At this point, in time, the planet is in grave danger, and that is why the Golden Rift keeps getting bigger in the real world. What Tifa says next is really important. She is questioning the spiritual energy if it really fades away. She asks, what if the energy trails to the live stream in a different form? She is talking about the real world. A dip with the fish really opened up her mind to what was really going on without her knowing. Tifa and Aerith then attend a class about basic planetology because Bugenhagen thinks that what they are saying is not true. Tifa shares that the planet is at war with Genova, that the planet is trying to heal itself, but it can't so long as Genova cells are part of the live stream and Shinra keeps draining the Mako. Later on, after the light ceremony, they are taken deeper into the canyon. After the trials with Red, they are led to a spirit by the name of Gi. While the group takes a ride with this spirit on a river, we get another cutscene of Zack. Biggs and Zack exchange their stories about what happened to him. Now we get to see what happened with Biggs as he was being pulled out of the live stream or the manipulation that Jonova made. You have to die in order to wake up in the real world. What is important is that Biggs actually remembers what happens inside of the live stream because he starts talking to Zack about the cloud that he remembers on the missions. Remember earlier when we were talking about how how at the end of Crisis Core we see all of the Black Wisps surrounding Midgar. Well, this is Genova creating the manipulation and pulling people she needed into the illusion using the live stream. What I mean is that the Wisps are using the spiritual energy to pull people into the illusion. 
What happened with Biggs is that he died in the illusion, so he was pulled back to the real world. Zack didn't die in this story because the Wisps were protecting Cloud. In return, they protected Zack. So he remained in the real world. Now we are going to bring back up the girl from the boat. Only she never made it there. Jenova took over her before she could even think about leaving. This is why her demeanor changes and why her backpack is left abandoned. Now we can confirm that Jenova is in both worlds. For right now, the fact that Biggs remembers Cloud is important. There will be another example of why it is important later on, but for now, Zack returns back to Aerith's house. He goes to talk to Aerith again. This time he touches her hand. At the same time, Aerith is touching water. She pulls back her hand and we are pulled back into the Jenova manipulation. Cloud starts having visions of Sephiroth again and his mission for Jenova is now clear. Retrieve the black materia and give it to Sephiroth. Now it is a matter of finding the black materia. Cloud and the group end up going to Nibelheim where Shinra has rebuilt the town to cover up what really happened to the town. Here Sephiroth is able to manipulate Cloud's mind to the extent that Cloud thinks he is being pulled into a memory. Sephiroth tells him to bring him the black materia again then Cloud snap back, snaps back to Jenova's version of reality. It is here that we get to see the men in black robe skin. This makes sense that Hojo would send them here because this was the last place that Sephiroth was seen alive, but his body is no longer there. His body has been broken down and reformed in a crystal cave somewhere up north. While Cloud is walking through town, he goes to the inn where he starts to remember Zack. He starts to remember what Zack told him while they were there. Then Cloud has another vision but the memory is distorted and it is not really what happened. Now this moment is important because Cloud now starts to question who he is even more. He begins to hate himself for forgetting Zack. He confronts Tifa about what happened and she confirms that he is not remembering the events correctly. When Cloud and Tifa get to the reactor, they have a horrible walk down memory lane. Cloud gets another illusion of Sephiroth where he is telling him that they will be together soon. Despite Jenova trying to take over his mind again, Tifa being there for him helps Cloud regain his sanity. The next part of their mission leads them to Shinra Manor where, if you remember from the beginning of the video, Professor Gas started performing experiments on Jenova. One of those experiments turned out to be Sephiroth. The only person who knows what happened is Vincent Valentine, who is still doing his job as security for the manor all these years later. It is here that we learn that Zack and Cloud were infused with cells from Sephiroth's hair and his blood. Then, as they are leaving, Roche shows up to face off with Cloud. It is here we see what happens to soldiers when they succumb to degradation. They become clones that Sephiroth can use. After they face off, Cloud sees Sephiroth again and tells him to bring him the black materia again. Well, okay, we get it, Sephiroth. So the group has what they need and they head back to the Golden Saucer. Only Vincent Valentine has joined the party because he needs to resolve his unfinished business with Sephiroth. When they get to the Golden Saucer the second time, their mission causes them to have to stay another night at the Haunted Hotel. When Cloud goes to sleep, this time we get images of Aerith sleeping next to him. This time we see Marlene next to her. Cloud wakes up for a moment then goes back to sleep and we get another cutscene of Zack. Zack comes upstairs to take care of Cloud and starts talking to Marlene. It is at this moment Marlene explains to Zack Aerith will die if she wakes up. Zack starts to question her and Marlene tells him about the moment Aerith saved her from the bar when the plate fell. She saw what was going to happen to Aerith in the manipulation. Marlene goes on to explain how Aerith will die in the live stream. This led me to believe that Aerith knows what was going on the whole time. This is something we'll come back to later but for now Marlene is right. After that, Zack goes outside where Elmira joins him. They see that some of the flowers are starting to bloom. They both hope that this is a sign that Aerith will wake up. Zack tells Elmira that he has to go away for a bit. He has to find someone to help Cloud. She tells him to hurry back. When Zack goes to leave, he sees that a bike is waiting for him with a note from Biggs about the reactor. After that, Cloud wakes up back from the manipulation. He then heads to a show of Loveless where the simulation is a big metaphor for what is happening. At the end of the play, Aerith sings her song and sees Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge. They are friends that she has lost in this world but still might have a chance to see again. 
Aerith is crying because she misses them and knows what really has to happen in order for her to see them again. After that, they find out that their friendly cat companion is actually a Shinra spy. After they track down the Turks, thanks to Vincent, they follow the Turks to the Temple of the Ancients. The Turks use the key and the temple appears. Inside the temple, the group gets split up. Cloud starts acting like Sephiroth and justifies killing people by calling it a homecoming. Meanwhile, Aerith learns that she can be one with the live stream. As the temple continues to shift around, Barrett, Cloud, and Tifa face off with the Turks. Yuffie and Aerith find them, and then we get the events of what happened with Aerith and Yuffie several hours prior. Here we can see Aerith slowly starting to understand her powers as etc. We then cut back to the scene where everyone is reunited again. Cloud's vision starts closing again. He picks out Elaine, who is trapped under a rock. He's about to chop her head off when Aerith tells him to stop. It, this doesn't work, but Elaine is able to escape just in time. Cloud repeats the line that it is not death, it is a homecoming. Tifa grabs a hold of him to stop him from adding to his body count. Barrett says that they don't have time for this and they head off deeper into the temple. We then see that Tenzin is in the heart of the temple. Sephiroth says hi the best way he can by stabbing him with his sword. Cloud and the others show up to see what has happened. Cloud stares at Sephiroth and Sephiroth says that it don't be afraid it is not death it is a homecoming. This confirms that Cloud's mind was being manipulated by Sephiroth earlier on. Sephiroth did, then addresses Aerith by saying you will see him soon enough. I believe that the he that he is referring to is Zack. Tenzin then shoots the clone in the black robe stopping Sephiroth. Tenzin then gets up walks it off to go fill out paperwork. I guess Turks never stop working even when they're bleeding out. From there, everyone except Cloud has to do a trial. This makes sense because he has Sephiroth and Genova cells inside him, him and the temple can sense that. When everyone is done being tortured by their past, Cloud could care less about what Aerith is saying and heads off to get the Black Materia. As they are making their way through the Materia, Cloud gets another vision of when he was hired to blow up the reactor. It's not a real vision without Sephiroth. As Cloud is walking through the wreckage of the reactor, Sephiroth's voice reminds him of how many people he had already killed due to blowing up with the reactor and the plate falling. Cloud sees Biggs and Sephiroth tells him that what he is feeling is not real, that he should stop pretending. Then the vision shifts to the moment where Jesse died. Sephiroth tells Cloud that his friend died in his arms and he didn't even shed a tear. Why is that? Well, if you ask me, it's because that they didn't really die. Or a better answer is that none of this is real, Genova. I see what you're trying to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving on. Sephiroth lets Cloud know that he is a puppet. At this point, Sephiroth is just con confirming what we already know. Cloud stabs him with his sword, giving Sephiroth a moment to be really close with him. He then gives Cloud the most awkward hug in game history and says that he is doing good, that he wants Cloud to fill his heart with rage to confuse his mind. Everyone is watching this daydream happen and Cloud has to clarify that he is not like Sephiroth. Sure, you're not, buddy. Sure. They move deeper into the temple. This time, Sephiroth reveals himself to the whole group. He lets them know of his master plan. He plans to reunite with Genova, making the two of them whole again. This is what he has meant the whole time when he says reunion. They then take out the monster demon that Sephiroth leaves behind. Then Cloud has a mental breakdown and goes into a fit of rage. He continues that fit of rage, destroying the door. Then after that, they go into the room where the black materia is being held. Cloud is no longer with us as he starts to laugh when he gets his hand for the black materia. He picks it up, making the failsafe for the temple go off. Kit then shows up to help them escape. With him being a robot, it is no big deal to sacrifice himself. The others all follow Vincent out of the temple just in time. Once everyone is out of the temple, Barrett takes the black materia from Cloud and tosses it. It rolls on the ground in front of Sephiroth's feet. Now, Sephiroth says that this is the key to grant access to the true counterpart between worlds. The Black Materia allows him to fuse with Cloud and make the connection to the real world. In order to be as powerful in the real world, Sephiroth is going to take over Cloud's body, using him as a vessel. 
Using the black materia, he makes a bridge for Cloud to get to Sephiroth. Sephiroth then drops the black materia, making Cloud catch it. I'm assuming that the reason for this is because for Cloud to be a proper vessel, he would need to come willingly, or it is a power trip for the others to watch. Either way, the Cloud they once knew is gone. Cloud is about to hand the materia when Tifa steps in to stop him. Aerith picks up the black materia and locks eyes with the really intense Cloud. He shoves Tifa away as Sephiroth controls his mind, making him go after Aerith and the Materia. Aerith tries to run away, but the Black Whips stop her from moving too fast. She reaches the end of the branch and turns to see Cloud approaching her. Knowing that there is nothing she can do, Aerith gives the Black Materia to Cloud. Cloud then gives the back Black Materia back to Sephiroth. After Cloud gives him the Materia, he looks back and sees the Whips attacking Aerith. This leads his mind back to the first moment they met. Cloud snaps out of it and tries to save her, just as the wisps push her off the edge. Cloud grabs her hand to keep her from falling. Sephiroth flies up and takes out the branch with a swipe of his sword. Cloud and Aerith fall. The next important scene is Zack making his decision on where to go. If the player chooses to save Cloud, we only get part of a cutscene of Zack trying to get to Hojo. I'm assuming that we will get the rest of this cutscene in the next game. The other choice is to follow Briggs to the reactor where he ends up getting shot. Now, due to the fact that this is the real world, Spirit will return to the live stream. Now that Cloud is unconscious in the manipulation world, he is able to wake up to see air of spirits. The both of them are spirits at this point in time because as Marlene said, you would have to die in the manipulation world in order to truly wake up. Here, Aerith wants Cloud to look up at the sky and see the rift. She wants him to understand why she can't stay in his world. The two of them go on a date and spend what little time they have left together. They finally make it to the church. While the two spirits are inside the church, Zack is sitting outside contemplating what to do. Sephiroth casts Zack to a place that is in between the real world and the manipulation. Inside the church with Cloud, Aerith hugs him and tells him thank you. She takes her hair down so that way it is the exact same way her hair is in the real world then gives him the white materia. Cloud doesn't want to take it from her because her mother gave it to her. Then Aerith says, this isn't about me though, it's about saving the world and you. Then she starts to send him back when the rainbow effect takes place. She then thanks him for everything. She shoves him into the flowers. Just as he's falling, he sees Sephiroth walking into the church. The whole scene is important because she is letting Cloud know what has to happen without really saying it. After that, Sephiroth is showing Cloud the world that he had made for him. That is why you see fragments of what Cloud is led to believe about his past is true. Genova is able to create his reality by messing with fate. Sephiroth is calling it different worlds, but it is really a Genova admitting that she's creating a manipulation or a false reality that he thinks is the real world. He goes on to talk about how everyone is bonded to the live stream. Genova is telling Cloud how she is able to create the manipulation using the live stream. Then we hear Aerith talking about Sephiroth's point of view of the planet. She says that he, this is not the way it's supposed to be. And she is right. Cloud should be waking up right now, but Genova is doing everything in her power to keep him from waking up. We then see the two balls of light that represent the real world and the manipulation colliding into one. That will only happen if Cloud really wakes up, in which case he would have to die. Then Sephiroth is telling Cloud to let go of his past. He is telling him to never wake up and stay in the false world that has been created for him. Cloud wants nothing to do with it. Sephiroth says that he needs a push in the right direction. Finally, Cloud wakes up in the sleeping woods, where he sees Air Spirit again. She tells him to focus on himself. Cloud thinks that he is fine, but that is farthest from the truth. Aerith truly knows everything now and what has to happen to save everyone. She then tells him to focus on the real version of himself. She says to leave Sephiroth to her that she can handle him. She lets Cloud know what he is planning to use the black materia and she won't let it happen. She is explaining that Genova can only be stopped by etc. Cloud gives the white materia back to Aerith and she gives him the orb with no color. 
the materia that has no color this whole time because it is a copy of Eris memories and they're not there because it is a manipulation that was made for Cloud and not her so she is handing him fake materia at this point the white whiffs take him back to the fake world when Cloud wakes up he is holding on to Aerith with both of his hands keeping them from falling he grabs the materia from her hair to keep it from breaking they fall to the ground but Cloud broke the fall, leaving him unconscious. That is how he was able to see Aerith's spirit in a dreamlike state. We see that Aerith is able to get up when Tifa and the others find them. Barret carries Cloud until they reach the sleeping woods. Then Aerith goes off on her own to try to stop Sephiroth. Cloud is finally able to move as the others are walking around trying to find her. Everyone goes after Aerith to help her fight Sephiroth. Well, on the way, Cloud starts talking about the other worlds. He is right on the verge of becoming self-aware. Then when they get to the temple left by the ancient, Sephiroth appears again. This time, he is telling Aerith to pray to keep Cloud on his path. They get to the main part of the temple where everyone clears a path for Cloud to get through. Now Cloud goes on a solo mission to save Aerith and stop Sephiroth. Cloud gets close to Aerith and you can hear what she is praying for. She is not praying to save the world, but to keep the others safe. She is asking the planet how she can keep them safe. Now we see Cloud struggling to not to kill Aerith. The wisps are all around him. Cloud tries to change his fate by stopping Sephiroth from killing Aerith. Aerith knows that she has to wake up. This is why she is okay with her death in this world. No matter what happened, she was not going to let the wisps or Cloud change her fate. This is why we... See her falling after Cloud thinks he saved her. This is the final push Cloud needed to break his mind. At the same time, it needed to happen for Aerith to be able to save the planet. The materia is still white in this world because she doesn't know how to summon Holy, which is the only magic capable of stopping the meteor that Sephiroth is going to summon. In the real world, the materia is still white and she will be able to perform the spell. All of this is supported by what she says when she says her final goodbye to Cloud. At the end of the game, we see Cloud and Aerith saying their goodbyes. In this scene, Cloud is talking to Aerith about getting back to the real world. She is going to put everything into her prayers to stop the meteor from destroying the planet. That means that in the next game, we will see her waking up to Zack. Thanks to what we learned about Figs, we know that Aerith will have all of her memories of what happened in this world. This way, when she does the prayer again, the material will turn a light green color like it does in the original game, as an indication that the planet heard her and then the magic will happen. So for now, we won't know and more until the next game. Okay, so I know that there's a lot to go over, but please let me know what you think down in the comment section. Please subscribe and like the video. And until next time, it's been bittersweet.